Microphones. One of the cornerstones in our entire Century Orchestral series is the wealth of unique microphone options, offering you the complete ability to control exactly what type of sound you want and where you want it in regards to placement in the room, all the way here from the big lush hall microphones to the much more close and intimate studio sound of our spot mics. Let's start by examining the three different hall-based microphones. These are great for more traditional symphonic pieces where you want that lush and really lively sound of the hall. And let's start with the Decca Tree here, which is a spaced microphone setting with a very strong stereo image. If you're familiar with typical classical recordings, you're often going to be hearing the Decca Tree as the most common microphone setting in classical recordings. The wide microphone option here has a wider and more distant microphone perspective. Really great for that larger room bloom, if you will, and uh, awesome if you ever do surround recordings, you definitely want to start mixing the different mics together here. The white here is really pushed further back in the hall. But the most commonly microphone position is probably going to be the mixed microphone position, which is a combination of over 20 different microphones, including the Decca, the Wide, the Spot Mics here, and a variety of auxiliary microphones. Mixed has the richness of the hall, but it also has the clarity you get from the close mics. And I'll get back to that because we did a variety of modifications to the hall, allowing us to both get that beautiful lush hall sound, but also get a totally dry studio sound here. Isn't it sweet down there in the soft dynamics? You can hear that rosin of the Sardinos. It's so beautiful. Another thing about Sentry as well is that this is a lyrical library. Sure, you got your fortissimo, but there's a lot of sampling going on in what I would say is the more tempered range of the strings and a lot of emotion as well. You can hear the players. And speaking of really hearing things, let me turn on the close mics here. If you really want a close and intimate sound, the spot mics here or the studio close are really the right ones. The spot mics were placed close to the players and their instrument and we used a variety of custom techniques to cut off the bleed from the hole. So you have a really delicate and very personal sound of the individual player. You can really hear it like the intimacy of the sound. And if you notice the tail of the sample, there's virtually no hole. This is totally studio dry. And it's just so beautiful to have both options from the lush hall mics to the close here, and especially the capacity to mix them as well and really design your own sound. And I'll get back to that later in this video. I recommend using the spots on stuff like legatos and melodies where you really want that upfront sweet and personal sound. Perhaps you want those first violins really to play upfront with the close mics and maybe place the second violins back a little further using a combination, for example, of Decca and close mics. Or maybe you're just like me and I prefer to use the mixed microphone position. Now let's move on to the second proportion of the microphones, namely panning. There are two predominant philosophies when it comes to panning in orchestral music. I would say there's an old or traditional way of looking at things and then there's a new way of thinking. 
The old one is called forced panning, meaning that the instruments are recorded in a classical seating configuration. Let me just show you a chart of what that looks like. So here you've got the layout and placement of the orchestra. You'll notice, for example, that the violins are always going to be to the left and the basses and cellos, for example, are always going to be to the right. And what's great about this method is that the instruments are recorded in exact position according to a traditional symphonic seating layout. Violins on the left, basses to the right, and so forth. But let's say that you have a more modern arrangement. Maybe you want to do a pop arrangement of rock, country, hip hop, maybe you just want that gorgeous, more intimate chamber section sound. Well, with forced perspective, you are locked to the depth and position of the instruments. Those first violins are always gonna be a little back in the hall to the left. The second violins a little closer, but still forced to the left. Now this brings me to the other and newer way of thinking about panning called center panning. The idea with center panning is that you can control the exact placements of instruments in the room. You can control the distance and depth of the instrument with the microphone options, reach deeper in the hall with those beautiful ambient hall microphones, or get very close to the instrument with the spot microphones. But everything is centered, meaning that you're not locked to having everything to the left or to the right in the mix. You can actually do exactly what you want. Now, if you look down here, you'll notice that we have panning options for each of the microphone positions. So you can go anywhere from left to right or start combining different perspectives together, which is really one of the wonders of center panning as well. But instead of talking about it, let me try to show you what you can actually do with center panning. I'll show you a couple of different examples here uh, with the cello legato. Let's start by using just the close mics here. You'll notice that the pan down here is set hard left and hard right for the two individual microphones. Here is a more narrow perspective also using the close mics here. I'm going to move things slightly more to the right here and then do it in real time as I'm playing as well so you can hear how you can actually dial in the panoramic perspective to your liking and really get it to sit exactly where you want it. Let me just isolate one of the spot mics here so you can hear it isolated. Obviously it has a much more mono-like sound, but again, it's just to give you an idea about like how much you can actually do both in terms of microphone positions, but also playing around in the panoramic field. Here's a combination blending both the closed microphones here combined with the Decker microphone here, and I'll gradually push us further into the hall by increasing the Decker mic here. Obviously, you can fine-tune your mix by turning the close down here and upping the Decker as well. But it's just to give an example of what happens once you start blending both the close studio mics here together with the more lush hall microphones. And let me just play that one more time, just isolating one spot mic here together with the Decca. I'm gonna pan the Decca here to the right and then I'll gradually be panning the close as well. So in a forced panning setting, the cellos would be to the far right here. But again, it really depends on your music and how far you want it. One of the beautiful things about center panning is that you choose how far you want it to the right or left for that matter. Or you can be like me, just click on the mix microphone here, set the panning and you'll be done with that. But if you really wanna get into placement and hole, it's about combining the different microphones here. And uh, let me just show that. And here's my way of doing it, simply just clicking on the mix microphone here, setting the pan to the right, and you're done.
So in summary, with centered panning, the microphone allows you to control the depth of the hole or the distance to the instruments. And the panning allows you to control the panoramic perspective and placement of the instrument, whether that be left centered or right or whatever you want. But if you want to go even deeper, check out our effects section here. You can choose from a variety of presets. So right now we have the closed microphones, but I'm actually going to place them inside of a cathedral using a far mic here. And then I'm also going to be playing with the pan field down here, push them further to the right. Or we can go for a more narrow perspective here, go back to the convolution. Let me pick a little more close sounding convolution shot here. Let's choose the church close. And again, you can completely choose where you want the convolution in the panoramic field as well on top of everything else. Let's take this one out. And let me just play one last example here using the Decca and White, and you'll see I've moved the panning to the right comfortably where I think the violas would normally sit in a traditional seating arrangement. So in essence, the centered panning philosophy allows you to do exactly the same as forced panning, but without being statically locked to one room and distance in the given room. And that is why our entire central orchestral instruments are recorded in center position. But if you're like me and you like to compose fast and just get things going, you essentially just choose the mix microphone here, move the panning down here and you're set. You can actually see that I already set it here for my violas. And to me, this is what center is all about. You have traditional strings, you have Sodino strings, we listened to some of the Sodino or muted strings in this video. You have three beautiful sets of hall based microphones. You have intimate and close studio microphones. You have the ability to control the panoramic field for each of the mics or combine them. And on top of that, you have custom convolution reverbs, including room placement utility, so you can place it in the panoramic field. So there you go. This is Sentry and this is Trolls signing out.